Sinai and the Sahara will always be compromised. In my capacity as head of the G5 Sahel, I invite you to invest, as we already do in helping our Libyan brothers in the process of reconciliation and the search for peace. All right, let's now bring in uh, Islamist uh, scholar Dr. Hassan Kinyo, who is with us here in studio to speak more about this uh, efforts on counterterrorism in the Sahel region. Many thanks for joining us in studio, Doctor. Thank you. Now, we've seen a lot of this uh, counterterrorism going on all across the continent. Mm -hmm. This, of course, uh, in the Sahel region. First of all, what are your thoughts on these efforts to unite to fight terrorism? Uh, it, it, it's uh, good efforts. But unfortunately, uh, there is lack of uh, expertise, mm -hmm. and there are also many interests from many corners. Mm -hmm. That is the major problem which we, we, we see, in, especially in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because the problem with Africa, one, I must uh, uh, state is that uh, Africans do not believe in themselves. In many situations, they depend on strategies given to them by someone else who is not in Africa, and you know situations differ and the environment also differ. Mm -hmm. So I think Africa should come up with their own way of fighting terrorism. And if they do that, I believe we'll fight terrorism and we'll win. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I mean, uh, these efforts uh, by the Sahel leaders, the likes of Mali, Chad, Niger, of course, we've seen a lot of uh, Boko Haram insurgents uh, in the, the Western uh, region of Africa as well. Yes. Uh, so what tactic uh, are, are you talking about uh, that is not a Western tactic? I, I think uh, the first thing we have to realize and appreciate is that uh, uh, in Africa, many leaders want to cling to power for almost the, ent the entire life. Mm -hmm. That is one of the problem. If we change in Africa and we have pure democracy, whereby if you go to elections and you are defeated, then you go home without trying to cling on to power, I believe things will change. Because if you look at West Africa, for example, what happened in Northern Africa, for example, Libya and the rest, you realize that people were tired of the leaders who had stayed for too long. So they revolted against those leaders. Now you come to West Africa, the same is happening. Just look at what Jame had done. You, you, you are defeated in elections, but you want to still cling to, to that. Mm -hmm. So you realize that if African leaders realize that, uh, for example, we, we thank what we have done in Kenya, that our president will only go for two terms. This at least can change things. If all African countries agree to this, mm -hmm. I believe that we will have changed this country, mm -hmm. this, this continent forever. All right. Yes. And uh, these uh, countries coming together like this uh, with a bit of counterterrorism, there's been a lot of comparison to what ECOWAS did, yes. uh, especially with the issue in Gambia. Mm -hmm. But uh, this strong force, do you think it has a better impact, a bigger impact on counterterrorism? Mm -hmm. I, I personally, I believe no, not, not really. Mm -hmm. Because you realize that uh, terrorists in each day, they change their tactics. Mm -hmm. And uh, the governments, uh, and um, I might say also the security apparatus in one way or another, they have information on something. They don't act at that particular time. They are reactive. So they, uh, they must change the tactics on how to fight terrorism. And I think, personally, the first way to fight terrorism is fighting the ideology of terrorism. Mm -hmm. Because it's an ideology. If you take your child to school and the child goes through an ideology which is planned in the child's mind from when he is young. Then the child continues, grows up. So you realize that that is an ideology. So they must have tactics to fight ideology rather than <coughs> war. Because if they just fight war without fighting the ideology, they will never win this war. Mm -hmm. And yes. of course, among the tactics we've seen by uh, jihadists is dividing countries along religious lines. That's very uh, we've true. seen that very many times. Yes. What is the impact of mm -hmm. this, especially in countries which are majority Muslim? Yes. You see, uh, what, what I must uh, state is that uh, if you look at Islam, many people don't understand Islam. Uh, Christianity has many denominations. Of course, we realize that in Christianity we have uh, uh, the, the Roman Catholic and uh, the Protestants mm -hmm. as the main. But you see, even with those ones, there are many other denominations. Mm -hmm. In Islam, we have Sunnis and Shias. Many Muslims will never want people to understand this, but they are Sunnis and Shias. So the jihadists have always tried to, to, to see that uh, the Sunnis fight the Shias, and the Shias fight the Sunni. Mm -hmm. But the major problem also is that among the Sunnis themselves, there are sects among the Sunnis. So these sects, when they are fighting, uh, you realize that uh, uh, they are ready to kill the other person because the first thing they do, 
they try to show that the other person is infidel, irrespective of the faith, <coughs> as long as they don't conform to their ideology. So that is where the problem begins. So when you have this problem, then you cannot move forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And let's uh, bring the issue to East Africa. Of course, mm. we've had a lot of uh, Al-Shabaab insurgents uh, uh, causing chaos and staging attacks in the country, in Uganda, and uh, most importantly, in Somalia. Mm. Today, of course, we have the Somalia presidential election. Yes. Do you think that uh, if East African states come together in the manner in which Sahel leaders have come together, then this, this might help in the counterterrorism efforts. Yes, I believe if, uh, uh, if they work together, this will work. Because you, you realize that uh, there is a time when people were arrested in Kenya, then uh, taken to Uganda. Mm -hmm. And people are saying that those people who are taken to Uganda must be returned to Kenya. The issue is because they are not working together. If they are working together, they could have just have said that uh, because we have this cooperation in fighting terrorism, that's where they are taken to that court. And they could move them to any other court. But because they don't have that relationship, working relationship, that's where we have the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes. And of course, when it comes to radicalization, you say it's important for governments to fight the ideology. Yes. But how do you fight an ideology, doctor? Mm, the first way to do is the government to make sure that they interrogate all the materials taught in our schools, mm -hmm. beginning from madrasa. I know Muslims are not happy. But, you know, the fact is that uh, Muslims are not uh, happy when we talk of the government trying to interrogate the materials taught in madrasa. Mm -hmm. Because that is, you know, what I'm trying to say is that, for example, I'm in Kenya. And then the books you bring me to learn in madrasa, they are from, for example, Saudi Arabia. I'm in Kenya. Why, why to teach me books which are authored by an author in Saudi Arabia in the context of Saudi Arabia, even the ideology is Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, 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 what I'm trying to say is that Saudi Arabia is purely, uh, is purely Islam. So if you want me to live purely Islam in Kenya, that cannot work. Or you bring me books also from Iran, written from Iran, and they, they have a context of Iran. What I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, in Islam, when you go to Madrasa, we have language. Personally, I'm a linguist. I'm, I teach Arabic at university. One of the things I teach at the university is Arabic language. So for Arabic language, you don't have to interrogate the, the materials I'm learning because that is language. But when you go to things like uh, jurisprudence, you go to things like uh, the muamalat, the personal, personal relations, those things must be interrogated. And what I can tell the government is that they must also interrogate books which are taught in schools, secondary school, primary schools, the IRE books. Mm -hmm. it, it, what I must say is that there are many complaints that some of these books have radical thoughts in them. That is the fact of the matter. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And this uh, crackdown on terror has also seen a lot of innocent Muslims and, uh, you know, both men and women suffer because of that... Uh, the division between uh, religious lines. Uh, in uh, the coastal region, for example, a lot of Muslims complaining that they're being targeted, they're yes. being called Muslims, mm. just on the basis of mm. being Muslim. This mm. is one of the impacts that uh, terrorism has been able to uh, affect the country. Yeah. What I must say to my sister is that uh, the way I'm dressing now, if I walk with that guy or anyone else with a suit, no security a personnel will follow up that guy. Mm -hmm. He might be having grenades, might be having guns and the rest. I'm totally pure, I have nothing in my body. But they will always keep an eye on me. This is a problem which we have discussed with the Kenya police, uh, with the NIS and all other security apparatus in this country because I thank God in one way or another, sometimes they consult me in many things. But what I must say is that uh, labeling Muslims and also prejudice against Islam has caused a lot of problem in this country. Mm -hmm. And some, there are times when <coughs> we realize that someone is arrested uh, or accused of terrorism, but we realize that it is just someone who has gone and made a setup for this person. Mm -hmm. There are times when some people have been arrested, and when you go to ask who came with this information, we realize that it's someone who divorced the wife, then the wife tells the police that this guy engages in uh, terrorism, mm -hmm. or we are in business with someone, and the person who wants to oppress me in business, he go and tell the police that I'm engaged in terrorism. So by the time I'm in those areas, and you know, the problem is that uh, uh, our laws on terrorism are not clear and they, they are biased in, in a way. So you realize that I'll be in, jail, in, 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 the, in the cells for some time. This person is squandering my money. And by the time I come out of this, pro pro this problem, it's almost one year. Mm -hmm. We have seen these things. Mm -hmm. Another case I must state is that, uh, for example, there was someone who was arrested in Meru, a businessman. And the person, the problem is that he had taken someone to madrasa, sponsored uh -huh. someone to go to madrasa. 
Then the person crossed to Somalia. So the person was arrested, arrested in Somalia. <coughs> How can you as government come and arrest me for the mistake of someone else? These are things which are there. You go and interrogate these things. These are things which the Kenya police is doing, which is totally incorrect. Mm -hmm. that, that person was not supposed to be taken there. And I asked them, in fact, there's a time I asked them. For example, I'm an orphan myself. And uh, the people who took me to school from, uh, from, uh, from four to bachelor's degree to master's degree, PhD, these are not my parents at all. What business do they have if I cross to Somalia to become a jihadist? The government should not arrest those people at all because mm -hmm. those people, the intention was good to educate me. So uh, I think the government must change this. And uh, uh, personally, I sit at Subkem. I'm the director of religious affairs mm -hmm. at the Supreme Council of Kenya Muslims, and this case is come on a daily basis. And in fact, it's the, case, the reason why in many situations, you find that I frequently visit the cells, the, the police stations, to go and try to see that we assist some people, not because we want them to continue doing terrorism. As soon as we know that, you know, sometimes you ask the police, do you have substantial evidence on what you are doing? If they have, at that particular time, we don't involve ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a, part, a matter of someone who took someone to school or business issues, we come and tell them, you guys, see that this is a problem which it, it's, a, it's an interpersonal problem, but you are also involved as the police to oppress someone. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, that being said, Doctor, as we wind up, your final word to Kenya and African countries on the way forward with combating terror. Yeah, I, I think uh, to Kenyans, the first move we should do is to make sure that uh, we have uh, good experts in Islam, mm -hmm. the pure Islam. And also, we need to have interfaith relations in our school. And we need to uh, try and streamline our education system. And uh, for our leaders, especially those people uh, uh, to the security apparatus, let us work with Islamic organizations to see how we can uh, fight terrorism. Because it's only working with Islamic organizations, especially the Supreme Council of Kenya Muslims. That is how uh, and that is the best way to fight terrorism in this country. Because 